am Veronica and I'm with Ebor Flavors and I am in Ebor City, otherwise known as Cigar City. Today we have a special treat. We are visiting the cigar shops of Ebor and we are going to learn all about the cigar rolling. And we ran into Ambassador Bob, who I think knows everything about Ebor. At least I hope so, because he's going to give us the tour. Hi, Bob. How you doing, Veronica? I am Bob Alorda. I'm here from Ebor City. And what we're going to do is give you a little history. The cigar factory or the cigar business started in the 1800s. And it became known as the cigar capital of the world. But don't forget, the mom and pop stores also existed then. There were two to three people. At one time, the factories were against them because they were taking business away from them. But today, they are more prevalent than ever because the cigar factories are less. So today, we're going to visit three of them. And what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see a hand rolling cigars. You're going to hear some of from me, but some from the other two individuals who do speak English 100% or 50%. <laughs> okay, so if they don't speak English, you're going to have to translate for me. I've always wanted to learn Spanish, but I haven't yet. You should have not eaten so much lunch in school. <laughs> Okay, so Bob, I think it's time for you to take us for a tour. All right, just follow me inside, please. Here we are, stop number one on the tour, and we are at La Frona with Odella Matos. Is that correct, Bob? Odelma Matos. I told you I was going to butcher <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> okay, we have a very special presentation because it's not too often that you see female rollers. Is that correct? That's correct, but she's been in the business or rolling since for about 28 years. She's been in Ebor for 28 years? No, she's been in Ebor for five years, straight from Cuba to here. Oh, great. How did she pick Ybor City? That's just because of the Latin community, the culture, and actually, she, I think she had a lot of friends in here when she came up here. <laughs> you know, friends and family, it always helps. That does pull. Her father is up in New Jersey. He's got a factory up there, but she stayed here. Her husband's here. Her two sons are here. Well, let's go ahead. Let's get a demonstration on how to roll a cigar, and you have to take me step by step through this. All right, as you can see right now, she is getting the filler and she's putting it into a binder. So tell me, let me stop. What's a filler? What's a binder? It's all, this is all tobacco leaves. Now there are different tobacco leaves from different parts of different countries. She puts them together. Now 80% of the taste is there. The other 20 to 25% is on the outside wrapper. Why? That is what touches your lips and your saliva. Where's the wrapper? That, the wrapper. Does it come it later? Yes, that's the last thing that goes on. Okay, so she rolls the filler and then she puts it in this little contraption. What is this? This is the mold. They put it in there. Now when this has got 10 cigars, they put it in the press machine here. Almost like a Cuban sandwich, you gotta press it. That's it, and what you do is you put it in there for 45 minutes. Once it is there for 45 minutes, you get it, you open it up, and you twist the cigar where the crease is on top. Then you seal it again to remove the crease and put it back for 45 minutes. So At the end of that, when you take them out, that's when you put the outside wrapper. Then she's ready. Si le saca esto y lo corta y se lo enseña, lo que están arribita. Okay, so this is the first part of the product. Right. This here, if you notice, You've got to put the outside wrapper. It's very moist. It feels really right, great. They, they, they got to keep it damp for it to hold. Okay. Then once the wrapper is put on, you don't need to keep it damp. Just hum get it put in a humid humidifier to keep them soft. Okay. So here we go. What do we do with this one? All right. La poner aquí ahora la capa. We have to wait until she goes ahead and rolls right. number four. Five. Here we go. Oh, no, she's ready. Now she is getting ready to put the roller. As she's you cutting the ends? She cut the ends. She's rolling it up. Watch how she pulls and tightens on the tobacco itself. Now, what size cigar is this that she's rolling? Uh, it's a 
¿Qué tamaño tiene TD? Es el 16 ring by 5 inch. Es tres diferentes ring. Y es igual a eso. Que significa, Bob? Es un ring 60 ring, 5 inch cigar. Ok. ¿Y qué tipo de leaf está usando? ¿Y este de dónde? La ropa es de Honduras. Honduras. Ok. That's the wrapper, and that gives you not a sweet taste, but a mild taste, uh, similar to the one I got in my hand. Okay, so tell me, she went ahead and finished this. What's she doing now? This one here. ¿Qué le estás poniendo? Oh, she's just putting it on the top. As you notice, that's where you're going to light it, so she's making it a little firmer so it would not spread on you. Okay, let's see the end. Wow, that, that looks perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see this tip here? Yes. You ring that off. That's what you put in your mouth. Uh, she said you don't have to cut on that one. Let's see. You don't need cora this you got because it's ready for Okay. See? Yeah, she's I didn't realize cigar rolling was such an art form. It actually looks really beautiful. It does, and it's not as easy as it looks. Not as beautiful as Odella, of course. I've tried it, and I got tobacco going all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so now, after she rolls it, if she didn't smoke it, what does she do with it? She puts them in the back and keeps them there for two weeks, three weeks, until they're nice and firm and a little bit dry. Then they put them out in the cases. Okay, so tell me about all the cigars here. Do you hand roll all of them? Yes, ma'am. That's a lot of cigars. How many cigars do you roll in a day? A hundred cigars. A hundred cigars. You are very, very busy. And what do you think of Ybor City? ¿Qué es lo que tú crees de Ybor? Para mí, Ybor es súper importante porque es la tradición que yo traigo de Cuba siempre, tú sabes. It's very important to her because it brings her background from Cuba to here. Well, we are so glad to have you here. Is there anything else you want to tell us about your shop? Hay algo más que quieres avisar del negocio tuyo aquí? Si quieres, señale todas las cositas que tiene. So, esta es mi nueva línea de tabaco. That's her tobacco cigar line. And what is it called? Este Robusto. Robusto size. And you notice she's got a picture on the label. So what is the picture of? Is that her? That's her. In fact, that's it right there. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. And if you look around when she goes to Cuba, she always brings a few things back. Over here, if you... No, uh, not the Indian. What? Oh, where are you going? Come this way. This is souvenirs that have come from Cuba that she brings in, puts them up, and this is all handmade by the Cubans there. She goes once a year and brings back items. Puts them up here, and believe it or not, they sell like hotcakes. And this is the tourists that come to Tampa and buy these things. So when you come to Ybor City and you want to see a beautiful woman rolling beautiful cigars, you need to come to La Frona on 7th Avenue. Very good, very good. Are you going to take us to our next stop? Yes, ma'am, I am. Where's that? It's about a half a block down Tabernaro. It is what you would call a small cigar factory. Well, let's go see the small cigar factory. Stop number two for cigar rolling, and we are at Tabanero Cigars with Yanko. Hi. Hello, guys. How are you doing? This is uh, Yanko Maceda with Tabanero Cigars. And, um, and this is a mini factory. Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we consider ourselves a factory, uh, or chinchal, or buckeye, how it used to be called back in the day. And what does that mean? Uh, it's a term that was used in here 100 years ago for a really small cigar factories, five to ten rollers. And how long have you been here in this location? In this location, is gonna, it was a year. Yesterday, October 15, we turned a year old in this location. But we've been in Ebor uh, making cigars since uh, December 2010. 
Well, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that I notice is that you actually have a lot of female rollers, which was popular in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was because uh, for some reason, females are more passionate <laughs> about what they do. Shh, <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell the men. Yeah, it's a good thing that the, the <laughs> most of the rollers, they don't speak English, so <laughs> I'm not in trouble. <laughs> Yeah. Talking about passion, yes. what's your passion? Why did you get into cigars? I, um, I fall in love with Ebor. I fall in love with Tampa uh, a few years ago to a point that I feel I belong to this, uh, uh, this 40 acres called Ebor. And I realized uh, most of the shops in Ebor, they were treating the industry more like a, a tourist attraction, more like um, souvenirs. And I realized with such a strong heritage, cigar heritage that Tampa has, why there was no one trying to rescue that? Why was no one trying to bring back what Tampa used to be? I understand that it's not going to be as a scale like a hundred years ago, but uh, as boutiques, as, as small productions, we can put Tampa back in the map as doing amazing cigars with Cuban rollers and hopefully soon also with Cuban tobacco. So tell me, how many cigars do you have here? Are they all hand rolled, or do you have cigars that people are familiar with and they come in and buy? No, we try to have cigars that uh, people were familiar with, and they were just going stale because people are looking for our product, something made in Tampa, made in the U.S. Uh, right now, we are ready for the season. 68,000 cigars in inventory right now, just done on, on that big humidor back there. But we do uh, range between 13,000 to 20,000 a month. So when somebody comes in, they go ahead and they're able to view all the rollers and they can come in and have a coffee, cafe con leche? Yes, yes. This, is, this is an experience, uh, just as a view will come into a big factory, but a smaller scale. And here you will see the person getting the wrapper ready, getting the tobacco ready for the rollers. We do everything completely by hand, Cuban style. A uh, Cuban roller only, only makes 100 cigars a day. Compared to uh, Central America, that they're used to do 500 a day, uh, 600 a day. So it's more uh, more craftsmanship, more passion into it, and and there we are really lucky to have the Cuban artisans here, because most of them show up from Havana, from Cuba, thinking the Tampa Steel full of factories, and when they show up to Ibo, they realize there's only a few small shops, the ones working in here and the other shops, they're really fortunate. You know, I've heard that a lot about cigars, that it is an art or an art form. And watching the hand rollers, I think, is absolutely amazing. Can you show us a demonstration? Sure, sure. I can show you uh, wrapping and bunching. Uh, in the morning, they come in and feel the molds. Uh, they press the molds for about an hour. And in here, because we take serious what we do, we added a draw master. This is a machine that before you apply the wrapper on the cigar, it would test the draw of each cigar. And that will guarantee that when you're buying a box of 25 or 50, all the cigars are gonna have the same draw. Well, I want a tour, and then I want to end off with a Cafe Con Leche. How's that? That sounds great. <laughs> well, something else that makes us unique before having uh, Cuban rollers is uh, that in the U.S. we have the Oliva tobacco family. They're uh, big importers, and they grow a lot of the wrapper in Ecuador. So we get to choose tobacco from different countries. Usually when you buy cigars from Nicaragua, Honduras, or Ecuador, most of the production is done with tobacco from the same country. It makes more sense uh, dollar-wise. But in here we get to blend. For instance, she's doing a Toro. It's a 52 gauge by six inches, and we're using three different countries. We're using for Ligero, which is the dark wrapper. We're using Nicaragua for Seco. We're using Honduras. Let me feel this. Yep. For second, we're using Honduras. And for Volado, we're using Ecuador. So you have three different climax, two different flavors, aroma on one cigar. And what's the benefit of doing that? Well, Nicaragua is well known right now in the industry because of spicy tobacco, strong tobacco. So you have customers always looking for that punch, that bitterness. Uh, well, we like to balance the blend. We have a strong leaf. Let's go with some flavor. Honduras is well known because of flavor, because of Rocky Patel. And then when you have those two leaves, you have to look for something sweeter, a bolado 
to kind of combine the flavor. So that's why it's really important that when you put all these three leaves together, let us set for at least 60 to 90 days so they can marriage really nice and, and, and create a good profile on the you, cigar. You talked about the gauge. I believe you said 52 gauge. Mm -hmm. What is the range of gauges? Uh, it is, is usually from 40 gauge, 40, uh, 42 gauge up to 60. Nowadays they're doing uh, 70s and 80s, but I think to my personal opinion that it's kind of trendy, that it's going to go away. Uh, but most popular is the 50 gauge, the Robusto. Second one will be the Toro, it's a 52 by 6. It's well known in Tampa because the uh, A5A from Arturo Fuentes. Um, which are always sold out, oh sold out of. Oh my God, they're, they're, <laughs> they're amazing. Arturo Fuente is one of our mentors. We always follow him. Um, and then next now, because uh, people are growing bigger and taller, the 60 gauge. 60 gauge is uh, it's about an hour to 25 minutes smoke. So since I'm shorter, what gauge would I be I smoking? Go, <laughs> I will go with a panetela. I will go with a panetela, a 42 gauge by six inches. Oh, I see a very beautiful girl, and she's carrying something. What is she doing? Well, she's um, she's the one who keeps the cigar rollers alive. <laughs> she makes she makes Cuban coffee at least three to five times a day, <laughs> and we try to do our prayers in the morning and in the afternoon with the Cuban coffee. And does everybody like the Cuban coffee? Yeah, it's very popular. <laughs> is three times a day enough? Um, I don't know. You should ask them. <laughs> One thing from, I guess, the golden era is the lectors. Tell yes, me what a lector yes. is. Uh, lector, because back in the days there was no radio or, or music. Uh, lector will come in and, and also educate a little bit the rollers because he will read uh, soap operas, he will read the news, he will keep the rollers informative and also um, uh, the rhythm working, it was a lot easier because this is a really tedious job. It's a uh, it's hundred times that you got to do the filler and then it's a hundred times that you, get to, you have to do the wrapper. So when you have someone reading to you, your imagination kind of takes away <laughs> and, and it's easier to do the job. We have experience having a roller here every once in a while as a guest for two hours and during those two hours all you hear is the voice of the lector and the chavetas and tuck cutters because they get so concentrated that is, it's amazing, it's magical. I love it. So the lectors are entertainers. Yes. Will you hire me as a lector? Of course. <laughs> of course. I guess I'm going to need some Cuban coffee to keep me awake for that. Yes. Yes. Let's go for that Cuban coffee. <laughs> Ready, but you need to show me how to cut it and smoke it. There's many differences to cut it, you know, um, but basically what you have to be careful is uh, after an artisan does such a great job with the cap, you don't want to cut the entire cap because the cigar will unravel. So try to use as a guide the last line that you see in the cigar. When you see that last line, you're going to get your guillotine and kind of follow that last line. Do you cut it straight off or an yep. angle? You, uh, straight, as straight is the right way and, and try to keep the cap of the cigar. Now, when you're lighting up the cigar, uh, back in the days when you had uh, matches, wood matches, it was fine to puff from the match because the match doesn't create a lot of heat. But nowadays with a blowtorch, it's not good to light up in your mouth because the first few puff is gonna mess up your palate. So you're probably gonna have to smoke entire cigar to really get to the real tones and flavor. So if you're using a torch, light up the cigar completely out, and then you By rolling it? Yep, and I'm gonna show you now. And typically when you smoke a cigar, do you inhale? No, no, uh, because you have so much tobacco in a cigar, just keeping the smoke in your mouth for three, four seconds and let them go, it's enough for the taste buds to, to start picking up the different tones in the cigar. Now, this is similar to wine. If you only drink wine uh, once a year, it will be a long time to realize what is a Merlot, a Cabernet. Well, if you only smoke once a year, <laughs> it will be the same thing. So if you, if you do it every Sunday, I would say after three months, four months, you're going to start picking up 
What is a mild cigar, medium, and a full body? Well, I've been looking for a new hobby, so every Sunday I guess I'm going to have to smoke a cigar. And make sure it's a Tampa <laughs> handmade. <laughs> Absolutely, and All of right. course from Ybor City. <laughs> yes, yes, Ybor City. <laughs> okay, so are you going to light it for me? Yeah, I'm going to light it for you. And then we're going to finish off with yes. a Café con Leche? Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, I am ready. Okay, let me show you. You hold the cigar, and you do the edges of the, of the cigar. Try to use the tip of the flame. You don't want to get too close because you're going to uh, burn too much. And when you see that it's completely red, the cigar is ready. All right, here <laughs> I go. Cigars and Cafe Con Leche. That is pretty tasty. <laughs> here we go. Mm -hmm. you can it up Salute. Here. Salute. Salute. Viva Ibor. <laughs> Ibor City. Flavor to suit any <laughs> taste. <laughs> Long Ash, and this is Michael. Hi. How you doing? Great. First thing I have to ask, Long Ash, what does that mean? So, uh, <laughs> so the name was actually <laughs> thought of by my brother, um, but it totally makes sense in the industry. So it's catchy, so hopefully people remember it, obviously. But uh, if you smoke a cigar and it can hold a Long Ash, it's a sign of a well-made cigar, well-constructed cigar. And so what is sense. a Long Ash? How long is it? A the longer the better. The longer the, um, the longer the better. The longer the better it's constructed, um, and it's just a it's just a sign that it's a well-made cigar with good quality tobacco as well. So it's catchy, it makes sense, and, uh, and people like it so far. So is this a family business? Uh, it is. It's me and my mother. Um, you know, we own working this. with mom. Yeah, it's not as bad as people may think actually. <laughs> so, uh, but um, no, yeah, working with my mom's been a blessing, um, and you know, I figure if you can't work with your mother, you know, you really maybe should work alone. <laughs> so, uh, so we've been fortunate enough to be able to work together and it's been a, a really nice relationship on the business side as well. So we've been here for a little over three years. We just hit our three year milestone, which was a nice milestone to hit a few months back. So uh, that was nice and uh, we have plenty of years to come. Um, my mother, I know, is heading toward retirement, so she's like, I know you want to do all these things, but <laughs> I kind of want to take a back seat. So that's the plans, but she's still a big part of this and will always be a big part of this. Well, happy anniversary, three yeah, years in Ybor City. How yes, did you choose? Ebor um, for cigars is, is really a no-brainer. I mean, um, it, I would not I would not open a shop if I couldn't get into Ebor. Quite honestly, so um, you know you could harness the name Ebor City in the cigar industry is, is pretty powerful, and um, it's just you know it's it's good traffic, good people. Uh, you get a lot of tours, which is a great thing. So um, so yeah, we picked Ebor and we stuck to it, and we, we were fortunate enough to find a place that we could work with. So. For people that don't know that Ybor City is Cigar City, mm -hmm. how, what would you say when they're looking to choose a cigar? Uh, and I, we usually get that every day. So there's more than one cigar shop in Ybor City, which is a great thing, honestly. Um, if there wasn't so many shops, maybe people wouldn't come down here in the first place. So we always encourage people to, you know, when they come in, obviously take a look around, check out the place, but also take a, take a lap around 7th Avenue and get a feel for other cigar shops and, uh, and kind of choose from there. Kind of choose what, what kind of rubs you the right way or what you feel is kind of your type of cigar or ambiance. So we encourage people to, to check out the other stores as well and uh, make their own decisions. And then what type of cigar would you suggest for someone who doesn't normally smoke? Sure. So anybody who's not a big smoker or maybe just starting to smoke cigars, I tend to suggest a more mild cigar. Um, it's a good entry level. You know, there's people that just start like a very strong cigar, <laughs> but it's safer bet to be more on the mild side. So I usually suggest something a little bit more mild. As we're standing here, I'm watching all these people go in and mm -hmm. out. So you have the hand rollers yes. and then you're serving beer and wine. Yes. So we have we kind of have it to where you know, our sidewalk appeal is our cigar rolls, and that's the, the heart of the business, right, is cigars. So we like to put that on display before you even walk in the store. So when you walk, when you see, walk down the sidewalk and you look in the window, you'll see our cigar rollers. And when you walk in, you're kind of in the, 
our little factory set up first, and then you can migrate back and it's more of a lounge. So we do have a bar with beer and wine, you know, cafe con leche, espresso, um, and the humidors in the back as well. So it's a nice little place to, to hang out and do your internet thing or just relax, you know, so it's a cafe feel to it. That's my type of place. Do you trust me to roll a cigar? I'm not gonna sit here and say <laughs> I trust you, but we're gonna give it a try, right? So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna sit down here with Luis and he's, he's the expert, so you're in good hands and uh, we're gonna give it a shot. You can't be worse than me, so I mean, you'll be fine. You're in good hands. You wanna cut it for you? Yes, please. <laughs> cut it right here. Not that much in the cut. Because if not the bang coming come out too much. Okay. I think he really and doesn't want to trust me with the knife or the cutter. <laughs> and, and, and the bottom, you cut it like that. Okay. It has a curve shape to it. And that'll yeah, go with the curve. Okay, it's looking really good so far. Now we take the inner part. You grab, yeah, you grab it like that. And you start rolling over there. Okay, right, so I, I stretch. Mm -hmm. You want to stretch in front? Yeah, and then oh, as you stretch. I got this. <laughs> I got this. Look at this. There you go. It's not too bad. Oops. We won't. We won't look at the hole down there. We'll just go ahead and keep. Don't Louise, worry about is it. this right? Yeah. You're doing. See, you don't even have to look at glue. glue. See? Hold on. You have to use a glue right here. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Yuka. <laughs> here we come, Yuka. There we go. There not too go. much. We not don't perfect. want it. Not we don't want it too tart. Yeah. Okay. We twist it. Mm -hmm. right, a little twist up in. Okay, in here. Do we cut it off? You can. You got to cut. So you got to cut this ponytail oh. off. So use your little chavetta knife right there. Okay, go ahead. All right, Luis, you're a lifesaver. All right. All right. <laughs> so, cut it. So you can go ahead and cut it. Sure. All right. I'm not gonna chop off my finger. No. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> it's <laughs> a, perfect. A cigar by Veronique in the Cigar City. We're going to put this in a plexiglass box with a special price tag. So if you want that cigar, make sure to make your way by the store. And it'll be on display for anyone. So if you're looking for a cigar by Veronique, a very special price, come to Cigar City. Flavor to suit any taste. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed our tour today here in Cigar City, which is flavored to suit any taste. And don't forget to join us on November 7th for Cigar Festival here in Centennial Park. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.